Back in 2014, I talked to the Photoshop team about adding freeform distortions where you drag points around to get an image exactly the way you want it. I diagrammed it for them and everything. Five years later, Photoshop added this feature. But I guess Adobe didn't like it as much as I did because they never promoted it. What you're about to see may be the best feature you never knew existed. I'm going to start things off by attempting at least to put this thing in context because after all, there's a lot of ways to distort and stretch images inside Photoshop. First of all, what in the world is this feature called? Perhaps it's called grid-based distortions. It doesn't really have a specific name, but this would fit because you, you can create a grid and drag the points at the intersections of the grid lines. We'll see that in just a moment. In Illustrator, it'd be called envelope warping, which I'm not sure has ever made any sense, or it might be called custom mesh. That's another, uh, there's a mesh tool in Illustrator. It's a lot like that. In any event, consider this photograph right here. Notice that it has a little bit of a bend associated, a bow that is associated with the horizon right there. And you might say, well, you can just correct that using lens correction, Deke. You don't need to go to these extremes, except that we have these, these mesas, these buttes that are kind of at angles right here. And then the, the one human being in the photograph, my younger son, Sam, he's stretched. He's stretched horizontally. And then let's say this cairn, this rock cairn right here, this pile of rocks, is very precious to me. I don't want to hurt it. And so I'll leave grid-based distortion up there for a moment so we can see the grid lines. These are them, and, and so you can create pretty much as many as you like. And then you can drag these intermediate points around right here. And you even have control handles in case you want to change the curvature of the intervening segments. So you have all kinds of control. And then I'll just go ahead and hide that title for a moment so you can really take in... Just, just imagine creating as many grid lines as you want to. You don't have to. We'll, we'll, I'll be showing you that in just a moment. But then this is the after version of the image with Sam not stretched anymore. So this is before. Notice how stretched he is, how curvy the horizon line is. This is, this is after. So it's looking, you know, it, it dips down a little bit. I could have worked on that. But I really want you to see, notice Sam stretched. Look at the cairn, the rock cairn right there, and then notice Sam not stretched anymore, rock cairn completely unaffected before, after. So you have that kind of control. Now you might say, well, Deke, I think you're kind of blowing this out of proportion because what about liquefy? Well, what about it? Liquify is an imprecise tool. It's a lot of fun, don't get me wrong, and is very powerful, but it's brush-based. You would have to brush in your changes, and you would have to make sure you're using the right size brush, and you're probably going to be brushing back and forth. It's great for faces because it's face-aware. It, it actually can recognize things like eyes and mouths and stuff, and it's great for people. But for big scenes, it's not the way it works. You may ask, if, if you're sufficiently knowledgeable, you may say, hey, what about adaptive wide angle? Hey, what about it? In case you're not even knowing what I'm talking about, it's this command right here under the filter menu with this whopping enormous keyboard shortcut. Thing is, it's good for panoramas, but that's about it. Otherwise, it's gotten kind of dusty over the years. It's unattended, let's say. But then we've got grid-based distortions, which give you precise control over every element in an image. So I thought, hey, well, why not? why not take that image that I use in order to pitch the feature in the first place? Why not take it, a much better version than the one we're seeing here, and, and work on it? And so I've got it. There it is. No, and it, 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 it's seven years old now. Isn't that amazing? And now what I need to do, this is a flat JPEG image. So first thing I need to do, is, let's say I want to stretch it so that it becomes more of a landscape image, more, more of a wide angle. Then I would double click on its layer here inside the layers panel, and I'll just call it photo and then accept that change. And now I'll make the image wider by going up to the image menu and choosing the canvas size command. You could use the crop tool if you want to, but what I want to do, notice I'm working in pixels. I want to make sure that I'm expanding to the right like so, and I'm just going to add 800 pixels there. Oops, I didn't enter the right thing. Plus 
800 like so and then press the tab key it does the math that's awesome click OK and that way notice we've got some extra room over here now one of the things you can do by the way I don't know if you even remember this feature exists once upon a time we were so enamored of it as some of you will remember as I go to the edit menu and choose content aware scale Oh, it's got a keyboard shortcut as well. And then all you do, right? Well, you can just drag, but then you're going to scale proportionally. And a proportional scale where content and where scale is concerned is not something anybody wants. I'm going to undo that little change right there, and I'll, I'll drag while pressing the Shift key. In, ca in case you're getting a proportional change, and press the Shift key so that you can stretch it. And then you just press the enter key and it's like, yay, oh, what a miracle. That's amazing that I was able to, this is Sam, by the way, over here this time around, make him super wide and weird looking. And then, if, and then where, where Max is concerned, his older brother, for what it's worth, takes his ear and shoves it over and then he's got this messed up jaw. So no, 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 no bad command it actually is i'm gonna have to undo a few things to make that right now this time you can get to this in a couple of different ways one is to go to the edit menu choose not free transform that works but transform and then warp and that'll take you directly to the warp mode or if you like this keyboard shortcut Control t command t in the mac you're used to it then just choose it or just press it and then go up to this warp icon right there and click on it so that switches you in and out of the warp mode so the standard free transform is scale and rotate and all that stuff and then warp is more advanced warping in in, in which case i could say gosh you know what i want to do i could create a grid i'll come to that in a moment but that that's going to be like i don't think i can undo this i'll show it anyway that that way you're going to it's going to key uh, create a grid for you and it's just going to add those grid lines and they could be three by three or four by four or what have you you may be seeing by the way i'll click on this gear you might be seeing these guides right there which i think just really super confuses the issue i recommend setting this to auto show guide so they appear while you're dragging in this density value just determines how many guidelines you're seeing and then of course you have control over the color if you'd prefer it were magenta so whatever it's up to you anyway i'll do auto show guides just so they show up when i want them real quick obviously powerful feature but it's destructive right not when applied to a smart object to see custom non-destructive distortions in all their glory join my patreon which is patreon.com deek now and now back to freeform image warping in photoshop but right now, if I were to drag one of these guys, right, I would, this is obviously a bad way to work, but I would start stretching max as well. And then I could stretch him some more by doing this number. Oh, what kind of father would I be? I'll press the escape key in order to undo all that garbage. Control T, Command T on the Mac to enter free transform. Click on the warp icon to switch to warp. Don't worry about grid right now. We'll come back to it. Worry about these guys, the splits. Notice, I just want a vertical split. I was showing you in my drawing, I just had vertical lines going because, you know, it's a horizontal example. I was trying to keep it simple. I'm just going to add a split warp vertically thing. And then notice when I move my cursor out, I can say, okay, I'm not going to stretch the people. These people way down here, I'll stretch them, but not the people up front, not the subject of the photographs. And then I'll click another one there. Oh, got to grab this guy once again. And then click, let's say, right about there. And then I want a third one. You can do that, by the way, by pressing the Control key or the Command key on the Mac. Although I'm going to get two lines in this case. What well, you'd have, If you just want one line, you have to get right close to the edge. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'll show that off to you but right now i'll just go ahead and select this guy again and add one here and now I'll zoom out a little bit so what i want to do is i want to take this point and i want to take this point select them both and i want to move them over now i clicked and shift click by the way but you can't shift drag you can't press the shift key as you drag so basically what happened i was kind of trying to tell you up front that I was so passionate about this feature, I described how I wanted it to work, and then they kind of, well, then they, 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 it was like they didn't know all the stuff, you know, like you gotta, you got anybody knows you need to press the shift key to constrain, 
they didn't do that. So anyway, I just escaped out again. All right, so Control T, Command T on the Mac, and then I'm going to hit warp, and then I'm gonna click this guy right there in order to add a warp vertically. What you can do now, press the Control key, Command key on the Mac. Don't click in the middle, because you'll add two warp lines. Click up here, and then you can just add a vertical line like so. Okay, so that's a controller command click. And now let's say I want to select a bunch of points, right? You would marquee them, right? No, marquee doesn't do any good. You have to shift, watch this point though. You have to press the shift key in marquee. So this tool just works differently than, well, everything else inside the product. But anyway, you press shift and you, and you drag. Oh, it went ahead and kept that as part of the selection. Or you can shift click to toggle a point on or off. And then instead of dragging, because I demonstrated how you don't have a constraint, press shift right arrow in this case. Notice that I'm gonna do that three times in a row in order to move these guys over. And I, I did shift along with the right arrow in order to nudge in 10 point increments. And so I'll click and shift click or shift click and shift click in order to deselect those two points. And I'll shift, I'll press shift right arrow three more times so that we have more distortion in this region. And then I'll shift click and shift click there and press this guy a bunch of times. Actually, you know what? I'll add these two back in. Click and shift click, watch what points are selected it can be deceiving and then i'm nudging those over and then i'll press the enter key in order to accept that change and you can see now i have this incremental stretch going on so there's a big stretch going on on the far right hand side it looks like an absolute distortion right however it happened it happens incrementally so i have greater control over exactly how I apply that modification. All right, now let's try a different, in case you need a before and after, this is before, and uh, by the way, this is after. So, you know, all the room in the world to make modifications. I'm gonna switch over to this elephant right here, and let's say this time around, I wanna do something a little different. I just want to change the composition of the photograph. So it's already kind of wide angle, but I just want to sh change how things are pitched inside of here. You'll see what I mean. I'll double click on this background here and I'll call this guy elephant for I think obvious reasons. And what I want to do is I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to press the V key to switch to my move tool and I'll drag this guy over and notice if you want to constrain things, you press the shift key, right? To constrain the angle of that drag. So it's exactly, horizontal in this case, wouldn't it be nice? It would really be nice Adobe if we had constraint controls. Anyway, I'm gonna move this tree over a little bit. And now I wanna take all this stuff and stretch it over to fill that space. And so this time I'll press Control T, Command T on the Mac, same thing. And I'll go up here and click on the warp icon. And I'll, I'll just add a grid. I'll say, you know what? A five by five grid is gonna work out nicely for this. But you could, by the way, you can go with custom and then it'll invite you to enter as many rows and columns as you like. But I'm going to stick with, oops, I'm going to stick with 5x5 five five for this guy. But what you want to do, because notice if I click here and then press an arrow key, it's not doing anything. Oh, but it is doing something. Notice that? That's because here in Windows, the option is stuck. On the Mac, that shouldn't be a problem. So you have to press the enter key or the escape key just to unstick it. And then you want to, let's say I want to add another, I, I wanna add a grid line right here, let's say, but I want it to be just vertical. So I, I need to move over a horizontal guide. Do you see what I mean? So if I were to move over a vertical guide with the control or command key down, kind of left that one out, then I'll get a horizontal grid line. And if I move over a horizontal grid line, I'll get a vertical grid line. I'll add a vertical grid line. And then if I move into the middle someplace, I'll add both. So it depends on how much control you want. Obviously, you can go nuts, but I just want to click right there so, so that I don't stretch this elephant. I don't want to stretch him at all. And now I'm going to shift marquee all these points right here. Did you see how this guy got deselected in the jumble? You have to be very careful. You have to watch your selected point. Don't just watch, around, don't just watch this kind of marquee thing. Watch your selected points. Because if I shift click over here, the marquee moves over, but I only have this 
and these points selected, which would make a mess of things. So shift click here, shift click here, toggle one off, toggle the other on, then press shift right arrow a couple of times to move that guy over. Then I will shift marquee these guys to deselect them and I'll shift marquee these guys over. I'm sorry, I'm, sh I'm pressing shift right arrow to move these guys over. And then I'll shift marquee these to deselect them and I'll go ahead and move this rock over some more like so, so that I have a nice custom modification going on. And I want you to see this elephant right here is getting a little bit stretched, but I think, I think, I'll, I think I'll get away with it. And then this heron, yeah, I think that's what that bird is. It's getting stretched as well. If that's not a heron, forgive me. And now what I want to do is I want to, let's say I want to select these points around the elephant's head, like so. And I might actually, in this case, you know what? I'm going to add some more uh, some more lines, like so. And now I have a whole mess of them. I just control click to make that happen. And now I'll add one right about here. So I have way too many, but I'll show you why I'm doing it. I'm going to shift marquee these points right here, like so. And I didn't get this guy, so I got to shift click on it. And now notice this thing, whatever it is, that's around the points that are no longer selected anymore because I just zoomed in. So let's shift marquee again in order to make sure they're selected. This marquee thing right there, that, notice that if you drag one of the one of the handles right there, one of the corners, you will scale the stuff that you've selected proportionally. If you wanna scale non-proportionally, then drag, ah, I just deselected because I pressed the control key for a moment. Ugh, shift drag around these guys. It really is a brilliant feature. It does need some work. Anyway, uh, look for the, watch the cursor. If it's up here, you can see it's a, it's a diagonal cursor, right? Which indicates a proportional scaling. If you drag it to the right location, if you move it to the right location on an edge, you'll see that it's non-proportional like so. So keep an eye on that cursor. And then if you move it out a little more, see how it's a rotate cursor and you can actually rotate the contents of that stuff. Obviously you want to keep it subtle. You don't want to go nuts, but I kind of, I want this guy, even though he's got his, his trunk down, I want him to hold his head proud. What do you think? Amazing, right? Want to apply such things non-destructively so you can modify the results anytime you like? Then join me at patreon.com slash deke now. And then go to deke.com and sign up for my newsletter. Not to mention right here at YouTube, like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Deke Now.